Today we begin a battle of giants, the Soviet Union against the Greater German Reich. As you can see, I've had to uh, <clears throat> edit a few flags for the YouTube algorithm. I hate that. It is what it is. Don't complain about it. Doesn't change anything. Anyway, we will be playing as Germany today and we will fight in Stalingrad. And this is what the map looks like. This is made by the same person who made the D-Day mod. So this is another scenario, so to speak. And it's 1942, the summer, and the German army is thundering towards Stalingrad. Stalingrad somewhere around here on the Volga River. And our purpose, of course, will be not to die. For those of you who have a little bit of historical knowledge, Stalingrad turned out to be a disaster for the German army. The sixth German army died to a man, well, not died to a man, was destroyed to a man along with several Hungarian, Romanian and Italian divisions in it became a quite humiliating event for Germany and I want to see if we can do better. So Iron Man on, historical focus is on, let's get cracking. One moment, I have an urgent appointment. While I love my kids, sometimes I just need to get a few minutes of tranquility amidst the chaos of family life. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Call of Dragons. Call of Dragons is a strategy game with some MMORPG elements from the makers of Rise of Kingdoms, set in a lovely fantasy world of mages, magic, and maidens. Now, with its captivating gameplay and beautiful, enormous world, I can escape the chaos and embark on epic adventures right from the comfort of my porcelain throne. Now, Tamaris is home to anything from tundra to jungles and is crisscrossed by stark mountain ranges and vast lakes and rivers. Home to a demonic volcano and a holy wellspring, Tamaris is a land replete with many awe-inspiring geographical features, all waiting to be conquered by you. Much like my wife and I face great ordeals with the kids each day, you too can gather your friends and allies to face off against massive behemoths. Ancient giant bears roam the frozen mountains of northern Tamaris, ferocious thunder rocks make their nests near the awe-inspiring Mount Tempest, and the burning lakes are home to the terrifying magma demons. Eight behemoths, eight unique raid instances. You'll need to master each one's moves to emerge victorious. Every one of your troops will have a part to play and you'll need to use their skills cleverly to come out on top. But once you've won, the behemoth will be yours to command. And if you want to face a true challenge, the red dragon awaits. Every season, the one thing all the warring factions can agree on is they wish to face him and the mighty struggle he represents. Defeat the red dragon and become the dragon lord. Only the strongest can bring this awesome beast to heal. Name your behemoths and work together with your allies to train them. But remember, Behemoth is a big responsibility, just don't forget to feed it. Not unlike my kids. Use my link down below or the QR code on screen and use code CODMONSTER. Download Call of Dragons today and pick up a nice reward along the way. Now, if I want to feed my kids, I better get off the porcelain throne and finish this video. Fallblau has gone tremendously well. We've swept deep into the Soviet Union and we're thundering towards the Caucasus. We have to protect the flank of army group south and eradicate the Red Army. So, what? is our purpose. Our purpose is, of course, to win. And to win, I'm guessing we need to take the eastern banks of the Volga River and the other half of Stalingrad. Okay, that's still a long way off, but it is the summer of 42. The German army is still in high spirits. So before we get anything done, let's let's look at the mod. Everything's been changed, pretty much. We have some negative spirits. We have some positive spirits. The Wehrmacht is overextended, so that's something we definitely need to fix. Our economy laws are are now tied to how important the conflict is to Germany, as is our conscription. So we'll have to balance these. Most of this looks fairly all right. We have a nice focus tree. It's not huge, but it's nice. It looks like we have to make some choices. Do we play the historical path and go for annihilation, the Vernichtungskrieg, or do we go for the, well, do we reinstate the Hague Conventions? We'll see. I want to I wanna not go full historical, mostly because <laughs> historically Germany lost and I'm going to try and win. But I am seeing some options down here. Operation Winter Storm looks nice. A new horizon. Apparently Hitler can be assassinated. Now that... <laughs> that is something that I definitely want to see. So most of this tree is fairly comprehensive. Small, very short focuses tied to getting you bonuses to keep the offensive moving forward until somewhere around here where it comes to a head. When the Soviets reinforce, they manage to dig in and start their counterattack. Operation Uranus. 
yes, Uranus. And we either have to decide, are we going to dig in and hold or are we going to counterattack and break the Soviets once and for all? I am an offensive minded player, so I'm going to try to crush Operation Uranus. Anyway, let's start at the beginning and strengthen the Don spearheads. This gives us a nice bonus. I like that. Other than that, we have a little bit of political power. What to spend it on? None of this, none of that. Oh, decisions as well. Let's go over this. So we have event decisions. Can't do those yet. They give us equipment, which is nice. We have reinforcement decisions. These are tied to events and certain dates. These are very nice because they give you free units. Free units are cool. And rapid unit deployment tied to your focus tree, depending on what focuses and what decisions you make, you will be able to deploy fresh units. It's going to be much quicker than training them, mostly because your economy is absolutely terrible. <laughs> this gives you free stuff instead of having to make it yourself. The downside being these are event templates and none of the event templates are particularly good. Let's start up here. We are going to increase the threat level. This essentially just makes world tension go up, which we'll need for the focus tree. And these two decisions give us free factories and manpower. Always good. 14 days for a bunch of factories. Yes, please. Why do I complain about the templates? We have two kinds of templates. The standard infantry regiment. This is editable. You can edit this. You can turn this into whatever you want. Cool. I'll try and do that. All the other ones are locked. These are all all lock templates that we can't do anything with. And these are the units currently deployed in the field. So the editable divisions, none of those are actually out there in the field. You all have locked templates, a bunch of units with locked templates. So let's see here, like uh, this one here, we can't delete it and we can't convert it. So we are stuck with what's in the field right now. And if we want to train more units, either we need to commit to making these editable ones and make good divisions, which is going to cost enormous amounts of equipment we don't have or we use the events to spam out more of the less good divisions but at least we'll have divisions so eh, balancing act we'll see let's first start by organizing the armies i want to try and get things organized into something uh, infantry combined with my motorized let's see what we have i want to split off all my tanks all my motorized all my mechanized into my spearhead this will be my fist that leaves me with a bunch of other units though let's see what we can do. Essentially, we'll have two fronts at the start of this, a northern and a southern front until we hit the Volga River or uh, the river. I'm not sure this is the Volga, but we'll have to then cross the river and we get more, more, more fronts. So yay, it's going to be confusing as hell. Also, we have a small pocket over here, which we'll quickly crush. Now it's going to be a matter of organizing everything. I want all my fast units, so my motorized, my armor, and my mechanized in one fist. This is my armored fist to punch through the enemy lines. And the rest is just a mix of infantry of all sorts, as well as like motorized artillery regiments. These aren't great. I could integrate them into my armored fist, but nah, I'm not going to do that. I need bodies on the line as well. So give and take, give and take. Can't have everything. Put everybody under our field marshal power. For those of you in the know, he was not, I don't think he was a field marshal at this point, but he he's going to become one soon. Well, not if we have anything to say about it, because he became a field marshal to keep him from surrendering. <laughs> Look, I, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. So northern front, we're going to try and clean that up, push towards these river crossings. There's a lot of river crossings. And for the southern front, we'll do the same. Now, what I want to do is not just push the Soviet army back. Yes, we could just push the Soviets back and have them like roll up their line. That never works out well. What I want to do and what I should do is create pockets, destroy the Soviet army and keep moving forward, taking as little casualties as possible. I need to destroy the Red Army, not push it back and then cross the river and head for the actual city of Stalingrad. We're still all quite a ways off. And to that end, I need to mop up on the western bank of the river, then move east. There's also the south here. There is an event that spawns more troops in the south, and I want to prepare for that, but more on that later. Now, for the economy, we have a couple of sieves, a couple of mills. Maybe controversial, but I'm going to start by building one dockyard. Why? We have no dockyards, and we will need convoys for supply. The river, in this case, counts as the sea, so I I want some convoys available to take up 
supply. Just, I need some convoys. Maybe for some naval invasions. We'll see. Everything else, for now, is going to be military factories. They don't have a lot of cores or territory that counts as cores, so we're a little limited in where we can build. Maybe we'll build out railways or naval bases later, but for now, this will do. Then, we go on to production. Now, this is, a uh, this is quite the pickle. We have a significant army out in the field. We also have a significant amount of deficit, so... We are short some equipment and we only have 13 factories at the start and we're going to make a whole bunch of equipment. Ideally, I would just limit myself to support equipment, artillery and maybe some anti-air. However, I showed you the divisions. Some of them have mechanized, there's motorized, there's AA, there's AT. I need everything and my economy cannot produce anything everything so i'll have to start by assigning like a single factory to most of this stuff just to have a trickle of it coming in and then adjust as i get more factories same for the tanks i need tank destroyers i need light tanks i'll need heavy tanks i'll need medium tanks it's gonna suck it is just going to suck actually i'm gonna check on my tank division so the tank regiment is light tanks and medium tanks and then the panzer abteilung these are even smaller medium tanks and light tanks and then there's the panzer brigade which is all mediums and lights so i won't need to make heavy tanks but i will need to make light tanks and i will need to make medium tanks do i want improved mediums so these are pretty okay or do i want basic and eh, let's go let's go with the improved medium so that's all of my factories assigned and this looks nothing like a decent production run i still need air as well so i'm gonna make uh F1, uh, Focke Wolf 190s and JU87s, Kanonenvogels. Gonna pull two factories off infantry equipment and let's leave it at that. We'll assign more factories as we go, slowly adding to the mix. Now onto research. Stupidly enough, it's 1942 and Germany doesn't have trains. I'll need to research trains. My logistics is already terrible, day one. And then for the rest, I could go for infantry bonuses, which will be helpful. Or I could go for industry bonuses, which will also be helpful. I'm thinking industry bonuses. Industry wins war, armies win battles. That's the basic setup for the infantry done. We have a little bit of an air force, not much. One thing I hate, we have a bunch of tactical bombers and all of them are broken. I don't know why, but for some reason, none of these bombers, the tactical bombers in our production or in, in our air force, have any range. This doesn't work. Fortunately, I also have heavy fighters and those still work. So my regular casts, my transport planes and my fighters, they all still work. So we're going to put them all up. Also got a couple of transport wings. Might as well put them to good use and uh, help out with air supply, just like Göring promised. Let's get things going and see if we can actually do this. The Soviet army is very much not in a good place right now and I want to exploit that by continuously keeping up the pressure until they solidify their defenses because I really don't want to bleed too many men but I want to keep going for as long as I can. And because the world is a funny place my tanks have already penetrated. <laughs> I've <laughs> already penetrated the front lines. I'm going to use my speed to break through, put up all my air as well. This is going to be my main focus until it's cleaned up. And then I'm going to shift north. But it looks like the north is doing fine all on its own. Encirclements, encirclements, encirclements. I want to inflict heavy casualties before they're able to solidify. And these guys are also all done here pretty much. So I have more free troops coming down south. I'm also going to make an intelligence agency, the Abwehr. Mostly because I want to use that spy to keep resistance down which reminds me resistance so it's all decent but civilian oversight's not good so i'm going to move to local police force i think and i'm going to use a different template so i don't want to use motorized for occupation I'm going to my division designer create a new one and let's just make it cavalry like the most budget occupation template possible just a single cavalry maybe it's a bit cheesy but um, we need all the help we can get at this point all right german units have penetrated towards the volga river now we have to clean up. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to take two infantry units and put them here. <laughs> because I don't want the enemy crossing these rivers. Actually, I'm going to cross the river and take one of these positions just to get in a good spot. Get a good spot. Yeah, perfect. 
Right, more divisions are now available. Let's send them north and everybody who's left nine more units. Let's also add them to the field marshal. So in the grand scheme of things, I am feeling relatively confident that I can break them. I've already dealt a significant blow by this mass encirclement to the south here. All right, more choices. I could go for the air fleet, it gives me a factory, or I could offer amnesty to the red deserters, which damages the Soviet manpower, which might be useful because it like, okay, clearing the West Bank doesn't do anything for me and it makes resistance harder for me. It does lead to Vernichtungskrieg, which might be good. I don't know if I want that though, because I have plans to uh, <clears throat> visit a new horizon, which means getting rid of the Fuhrer and I don't want to boost him too much. Offering amnesty there might be better just to bleed the Soviets of some manpower. I don't know what the Hague Convention is going to do. Let's just start with the air so I can get a little bit more factory out more decisions let's increase the threat level and we can go no not locally significant yet but we can add a military high command let's go for the infantry specialist we have a lot of infantry okay, so overall we're pushing on all fronts we're doing quite well we're gonna have a little bit of a problem when we reach these crossings i will need to use like holding divisions leave units behind to cover the crossings which is gonna thin my front out a little bit annoying but nothing i can really do about it we gotta hurry up and clean this up because i need to cross the don river as soon as possible to prevent a couple of events and mostly to allow us to take this decision. Crush the pocket gives us some free equipment and it hurts the Soviets even more. I don't want to use that to quickly spread my troops. So that's a good pocket. We've inflicted significant casualties so far, like 10 to 1. All right, we're about to make another crossing here, which is going to be lovely. Keep the Soviets from getting a firm footing. I need to keep them on the back foot. Keep them scared. All of that has been crushed. Let's redeploy. I I could go here and run amok in the south. I don't think that's tactically sound. I'm gonna go here and try and take this river crossing so I can prevent them from fully retreating their units. Perfect, perfect. Let's get across there. So if I can get my units in there, I can prevent the retreat. And to the north, we'll do the same with this river crossing. I need to keep the Soviets from managing their own retreats. They, they must not be allowed to withdraw. Let's also shunt my armor across here to solidify a position on the other side of the river. Let's get some selective bombing in while we're here. I don't think these units have any sort of crossing. So the north here pocketed as well. Perfect. This is going extremely well. We can now crush the pocket. The Soviet pocket is destroyed. We got a bunch of equipment and the Soviets get an even bigger debuff than they already had. Germany triumphs wherever she goes. I should cross the river here and establish a foothold before they manage to throw units across. <laughs> this is a pretty big amount of units we are uh, about to destroy here. I like that. I like that. There's a couple of holdouts. Got to destroy those. Then we need to get across the river here and really go to town. Really get cracking. Wow, this has gone remarkably well. This has really gone remarkably well. Of course, there are certain positions that are going to be annoying as hell to hold because I need to put up defensive positions just to hold river crossings until I've secured the other side of the river. So I am forced somewhat to really thin my army, but overall, not really a huge concern. Let's just clear the West Bank. I think this looks spiciest. And we have crossed the Don and the 4th Panzer Army is on the move. 4th Panzer Army is going to come up from the south, from this region, and they will be my southern thrust. And hopefully I can link them up with this little holding force I've got there, so there's at least something there to welcome my boys. Now to get to the other side of the river. It's already August. I've killed a whole lot of Soviets and lost a very few Germans, but there's always more Soviets where you found the last one, so. One army group, you attack from here, start heading towards, let's say, this region. And while the fast units here, I'm going to make a spearhead to try and link up with what we've got here. See if we can outpace the Soviets. We'll also redeploy air to somewhere where it matters. All right. Things are going well. Ugh, Russian reinforcements. And this is the point where it starts to turn. The Russians are going to get fresh troops with equipment, with manpower, and without horrible organization. And I am slowly going to get, well, I don't want to say my ass handed to me, but this is where things turn south for me, most likely as Germany. I'll do my best, of course, to avoid losing too hard, but it is um, a historical fact. Germany did not enjoy 
this part of Stalingrad, uh, the Stalingrad campaign. I'm also gonna try and expand the southern bit as well, so we have a good position to move from. Let's get some propaganda going. I've also researched my trains at last, so I can start making them. Now we're gonna focus on making my units better. All right, it's August 15th. I can pull in the remainder of the 6th army. Perfect, in three days I get more units. Let's keep things rolling. These are our economy laws. Basically, we can also move that up to locally significant. So everything improves just a little bit. We want this to be high. We want this to be reasonably high for manpower purposes. Eventually, I'd also like to get rid of the man with the mustache, but that is a problem for later. Right now, I have Russians to kill. These are the Russian reinforcements. You can tell they have like full strength, full organization bars, and they are going to be a pain Aim to dislodge, so we will have to play things carefully here. Again, we're simply going to focus on encirclements, see if we can isolate those units, destroy them if possible. If not, well, we can always try and go around them. That also tends to work out. I've almost got my armor linking up with the main front again, and then I'll redeploy the armor, clean that up. At least the south is, is well, fine, I guess. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> They've crossed the river here as well. Oh, please. Oh, I hate this so much. I hate... Oh, the endless micro for these scenarios is what is what's going to kill me, isn't it? Anyway, propaganda's done. Now we have a choice. The trust in the Fuhrer. I, I know my history. Bad idea. Or try and convince him to do something sensible, like send me winter equipment. I want to try this, but I first need to bump this up to strategic interest. So I need a little bit more world tension and a little bit more political power. So we'll, we'll work on that. First, of course, more factories. Want to win the war. Meanwhile, so you secure Kalash. I can also now start making my convoys. That will definitely help with supply. And this disgusting stain on the west bank of the Volga is getting bigger and I need to get it contained. And these units have also... <laughs> <laughs> Why? Oh, those units have also been defeated, so my southern front is also wide open. Yay! It's fine, I'll use the motorized to quickly, hopefully quickly, clean this lock. All these units have full strength bar, so I'm guessing they managed to get their reinforcements in position in time, and those then absolutely clap my cheeks horribly. So yeah, I'm dying. Probably gonna lose this scenario now because one stupid river crossing got captured because I wasn't paying attention or I was paying attention to other things like the uh, course of the war. Could launch a counterattack, which is all well and good, but every time I come to a stupid river crossing, have to leave units behind, I can't recruit fresh units because of course I can't. I have no equipment whatsoever. There's nothing I can do but sit here and twiddle my thumbs. I am annoyed. I think you can tell I am quite annoyed right now. Look, look at what... And I don't have units. I'm not even allowed to train additional. Well, I am allowed. I just can't afford to. There's nothing I can do to train more units. So yeah, I'm swinging all my armor and motorized around to try again to push them back. But the stain has somehow already managed to spread halfway across the map. I don't think I'll be able to push them back anymore. What I really need to do is break this tile. That is the one link the Soviets have with their disgusting stain here. And if I can destroy that link, there might be a chance. Oh, finally, the 4th Panzer Army has arrived down south. More motorized, etc, etc. They are welcome. More motorized, more tanks, more mechanized, blah, 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 blah. So that all goes towards Gustav. Try and push that Russian stain back. I am going to flip my desk if you don't. The rest of these guys start some sort of counterattack from the south. We need to push up. We absolutely need to push up from here. But I'm close to linking up the 4th army with the 6th. That will allow me to push up from the south, I hope. Oh, I, I was gonna say I hope, but none of these guys have supply because of course they don't. <laughs> So my southern army is just going to starve right after it spawns in. So there is some good news. I've managed to secure the river crossing, which is very cool. So there is something. P 
positive going on. Also, more fun. I've linked up my armies in the south. But the motorized and the armor are slowly stemming the tide. We're killing most of the things that we've trapped here in this western edge. When they die, their casualties are going to skyrocket. I'm still at 20,000 losses. Not too terrible. And slowly but surely, I am dealing with the Soviet problem. So I'm, I'm killing them slowly but surely. Hitler is unconvinced. I'm going to resign Paulus and instead either Guderian or Rommel. I'm thinking I want Rommel in or Guderian. Guderian for armor speed, Rommel because he's Rommel. Also, if I'm going to move down here and get rid of Mr. Schmidtler, I need a traditionalist marshal. That would either be Guderian or Rommel. Let's go for Rommel. Let's quickly see. Yeah, Rommel counts as both a traditionalist and for initiative driven. This gives me support for non-aligned. I'm thinking we go for initiative driven for ex... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Do I want to deploy the reserves? That gives me a bunch of equipment and this allows me to deploy fresh troops. Go for Vernichtungskrieg. That gives me ah, so many choices. Fuel. Yes, some fuel. As in history, Southern Army Thrust is a disaster, an absolute nightmare. It's completely and utterly stalled. Not only that, it managed to get itself encircled. <laughs> the entire... The entire 4th Army's managed to get itself encircled. 6th Army is pushing, but pushing so slowly it might as well not be. And it's still trying to contain the massive, massive stain up north. Oh, I'm having such a wonderful time. And of course, as we take casualties, let's see, we've hit the 25k mark. We're going to get events like this. As our losses continue, our morale is going to drop. And what is a pretty good bonus is going to drop down, down, down until it's actually a penalty. It's going to suck. It's it's absolutely going to suck. Okay, so supply is a massive, massive issue. I'm trying to build a naval base here to get my troops supplied because the Soviets are sitting on the only supply in the region. I, I can't dislodge them. At least I can feel good about the fact that I am inflicting huge casualties on the Soviet army with these maneuvers. I'm going to let this massive tendril just snake out, not care. I'm going to redirect my armor here, mostly because of the disgusting and, and huge amount of troops flowing in. I have to secure those river crossings. I cannot allow them to hook up with the main front. These are all technically encircled. Well, technically, they, they have one port. No, two ports. If I can get those, I have them by the balls. Additional reinforcements. Hurrah. Let's go strengthen the fifth, the sixth army. Great. Great! Those reinforcements are incredibly useful. I really needed those. Destroy them. Because there's no point in just pushing the Russian line back. That does nothing except push them into territory they're even better able to defend. I need to encircle and destroy. That is absolutely vital. Encircle and destroy. If I don't do... Oh. Speaking of which, we've cleared that. I'm going to leave this for what it is. I am going to try and push up from here to take that port and that river crossing to secure the positions there. It feels like very important. If I can push through here, maybe there's a chance. Also, finally, I have enough trains and convoys to supply my supply needs. So I am no longer starving. It's been months, but I've managed to get my production somewhat in order. So so we've got enough trains for now. I'm starting to get some equipment produced, but the logistics are still looking horrific. Absolutely horrific. I'm building as fast as I can. It's just not enough. I'm going to equip the allied armies, but first give myself a little bonus by getting Vernichtungskrieg. I don't want the bonus to fascismus. No, let's just, yeah, give everybody guns. We're starting to get a breakthrough in the south after I've managed to maneuver some troops around to create a big encirclement. This is a massive problem. Problem, but we're getting we're, we're gonna get it got soon we're gonna get this fixed uh, thanks to the absolutely heroic push of the motorized and mechanized units we've managed to take the port supply will stabilize well, stabilize will eventually sort itself out I hope I'm gonna need to upgrade those ports a little bit and we're gonna need more military factories because I always need more military factories it's starting to put things back together the fast units have managed to penetrate up north uh, if we can link up and take that port. Everything on the western bank of the Volga is is encircled. Not 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 even having to use the word 
much. Technically, it will effectively be encircled. It can destroy that, redeploy, and get an actual offensive going here, because all I've <laughs> really been doing in this part of the front is, like, move units up one or two tiles at a time to try and, and get some sort of encirclement in. Individual units getting encircled, and then I can move from there, like, do small things to the Soviets. Of course, I've had the South just pushing gung-ho. They've made a lot of ground, but also taken a lot of casualties and haven't really gotten a breakthrough that I want. What my plan is now is to get rid of Beholden to the Fjorder, get Initiative Drive or Initiative Driven or Traditionalist. I'm thinking Initiative Driven first and then when I've stabilized, take Traditionalist because I want that bonus. And then I can start working on these wide area operations. So this part of the tree here, that will allow us to get rid of or at least reduce this horrible overextension debuff. So we will at least be a little more prepared when winter comes. And winter is coming make no mistake small localized victories not much but every little encirclement is a soviet unit i won't have to fight <laughs> and that is how i'm gonna win this war by not having to fight every single soviet division if i can encircle and destroy them wonderful and they, they're, their division count is dropping make no mistake they're not capable of replenishing their divisions as quickly i think the um i get they get they got that reinforcement event there and i think They'll probably get another, but if I can thin the herd enough now, it might not matter. Because I have got a lot of their stuff trapped here in this, uh, oh, this, this breakout that has almost cost me the campaign. So I've got that port, and with that, everything here <laughs> is actually trapped now. I've been bleeding the Soviets, and I think it's time for a major counteroffensive. And it feels like, yeah, this is going to work out. I feel it's gonna work out. Spicy, certainly. Very spicy so far, but we're doing it. Didn't think we'd do it, but we're doing it. I, I doubt we'll get there before winter, but we'll get there. We are moving. The south front is about to link up with the center. We're pushing further in all over the place. We can do this. We can still do this. We've got them by the balls now. They've lost a lot of divisions in these pockets. Like, they've lost half a million men already. Ooh. That is more reinforcements for the center. Sixth Army. And we can get rid of Beholden to the Fuhrer. Uh, initiative Driven, small bonuses, and Traditionalist will give me ticking on the line. I'm thinking I want Traditionalist. Well, because I'm going to get rid of Mr. Schmidtler. That will also allow me to finally start fixing some of this country's problems. So many problems. Morale is dropping as we take more casualties. Fortunately, we've been able to keep it relatively low. So 50,000 casualties against 600,000. I think we'll hold for now. I don't think we're in much trouble yet. But we do need to be wary that we don't over overexert ourselves we may end up paying dearly when the inevitable counterattack arrives and it will it will arrive i feel it so yeah the the blob has been exterminated 30 armored units or fast units uh are, re are now available for retasking and we are going to go and have some fun we're gonna drive right along this railway here and smash into stalingrad Let's go right for the kill before Zukov shows up <laughs> with the cavalry. Yes, mechanized units breaking through towards, what is this? Tsaritsa crossing? Yes. <laughs> City is wide open. City is wide open. I'm pushing through. Soviet defenders have nothing left. I've bled them out in the outskirts and in the fields. It was a strategic move. It was it was strategic genius to, <laughs> to allow the Soviets to overextend their blob into my territory and then cut them using their... No, I got lucky there. I got really lucky there. But as a result, what could have been my greatest defeat is turning into my... Well, my ticket to victory. Because if it wasn't for that massive blob, I think I might have just been destroyed but the soviets did the heavy lifting for me and actually destroyed themselves in the overextension like they, they put their good reinforcement units out there to attack me as a result they ran out of all of their equipment and strength when they were eventually encircled and destroyed and now they have nothing left to actually stop the real threat or was it the, the western no the eastern bank of the river i can actually Take Stalingrad City. <laughs> I'm gonna win. I'm gonna actually win here. Oh my god, I didn't think I'd do that after the horrific cleanup operation I had to endure. I might actually take Stalingrad before December. Let's slow that down. That was too fast. Oh, I think that is like the remainder of the Soviet... <sighs> 
I think if I crush this, they have no army left and I can pretty much do anything. I've won. Unless Zukov comes out of this with a giant deus ex machina. I've won. Final cleanup operations in Stalingrad proper. Almost everything here on the other side of the Volga is clear. German armored units storming the last penal battalions. Whole and ink. <laughs> A penal battalion and two NKVD divisions defending the tractor factory to the last. It will not serve you. It is almost done. Winter is setting in, but winter will not stop me now. Soviet army's gone. <laughs> We've got like 10 divisions left. The tractor factory has fallen. Oh my god. And they're not dead yet. They still have a very large section uh, on the other side of the Volga. But this is it. I mean, they... I, I don't think even Zhukov can pull this out of the gutter. And even more reinforcements arrive. The final reinforcements that would end this campaign no matter what. But uh, they will not be needed. Operation Winter Storm. Great. More bonuses. But doesn't matter. It's over. It's it's over. Wow, I was hoping for like a, a super event or something, but we can just uh, bada bing bada boom. It's done. The Greater German Reich has won the battle for Stalingrad rather convincingly. Yeah, Operation Storm even gave me additional units. In the end, it did not matter. I could keep this going. But there are no more enemies. It's it's over. I had a lot of fun despite my endless ranting about it. This was actually very fun, very challenging. I liked most of the micro. Uh, if you like this video, let me know in the comments. And if you want to see me play something else like this again, hit me up in those comments. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoy the next one too. See ya.